What's up everybody, Robert here with A1 Locksmith in Dallas-Fort Worth, Texas. We try to bring videos that help you out, whether it's changing combinations on a keypad safe or how to open something, maybe change a battery on something. We also try to talk about new products from some of the manufacturers we like to carry, such as Liberty, Browning, Amsec, whoever it might be. In this video, we want to do an overview of the new pistol vault from Liberty Safe, the HDV150X. Kind of go over that, how it works, some ins and outs of it, answer any questions you might have. Let's take a look. All right, so again, we're looking at Liberty's brand new pistol box, the HDV150X. I'll fly through some of the features. Those are all things you can read about and see how to do online. And once you buy one and everything, but people come to me again because they want to know how to do things. How, do, how does this work and how do I change this and how do I replace that? So. I'm gonna worry about that mostly, but quickly let me fly through it, right? The box comes defaulted uh, with a keypad code, comes defaulted that any print will open it. To show you what I mean. Okay, uh, while I'm talking about that, I'm gonna show you the default code. I'm gonna tell you as well that the battery is rechargeable. It's not replaceable. You know, you don't replace it with double A's or anything like that. Again, one, two, three, four, one. Um, right out of the box. So I charged this when I first got it a couple months ago. Uh, it goes through the ringer here at the store. It sits exactly where you see it on my counter and uh, gets used all day long by people. I've yet to recharge the battery and I don't know that I've seen it change that much as far as loss of power or anything like that. Let's see some of the goodies that it comes with besides the box itself. Uh, double latches, I'm your locksmith. I'm gonna talk the nerdy stuff real quick. Double latches, making it that much harder for somebody to try to pry it open usually there's only one it's kind of dead center so it gives you some more leverage on the side they put them both towards the outside of the box i like that a lot it's got some real nice heavy duty hinges in the back uh, and the steel isn't super thin and weak so again as a locksmith i think the security of this for a pistol box is pretty nice again the goodies that it comes with the box i had in here block usb c and of course it's got the um, security cable, which comes with it. There's a notch back here in the back, so you can wrap the cable inside of here. And then uh, again, obviously go around some heavy furniture that can't be moved or the framing of your seat and your vehicle. That's how you choose to carry it as well. You've got options. It's got the foam on the inside, top and bottom. So let's say you had a thicker weapon, for example. Uh, again, it's not just gonna beat up against it because it's foam padded. There is a layer that is completely removable. And technically, I guess you can remove two layers. Uh, but if you leave the bottom layer because you got a little bit thicker of a weapon, that's okay. Real quick, Smith & Wesson Shield 45. Pretty compact weapon. Uh, I'm showing you clear and dry. Uh, that fits no problem. Um, showing me that we'd probably fit a 1911, I would imagine. And maybe even some large uh, wheel guns probably would go in there pretty easily. If I remove this reinstall the first layer of foam we'll look at it again for fitment clearly i can fit two of these side by or you know two of these in here um no problem as i go to look down as i close it i've got a ton of space so again i feel pretty confident that even some wheel a lot of big full-size wheel guns would fit in there so we'll remove this bad boy everybody always likes to see how the guns fit and i think that's fair right here I don't know whether the camera picks up, but I'm pretty sure you can see number one, you can see number two. Those are holes drilled in the bottom of it so it can be anchored. There is a third hole here. You may not be able to see my camera angle. Uh, and there were screws, wood screws, that came inside that box uh, underneath the cable. And so this could be mounted pretty quick and easily that way as well. In the front here is a mechanical lock. Uh, it comes with two tubular ACE keys, the round style key. I like that a lot as your locksmith because I know that you're gonna have a Really good backup plan if your keypad stops working, you forgot the combination, your fingers aren't reading, or the battery has died since the last time you used it, you stashed the key somewhere, not in the box. And you've got a way to get in quick and easily. And uh, if we needed to, the key, if ever lost, could be retrieved through the manufacturer, uh, again, if ever needed. So that's a really nice added backup. They've kind of thought ahead on that for us. I think it's important that I tell you something about the keypad. It will hold a five digit combination. Again, I told you the default was one, two, three, four, five. That's five numbers. Um, it will only hold five numbers. It's not gonna hold four, it's not gonna hold eight or 10. 
and it will only hold one code at a time. Okay, so only one code has to be five digits. Over here on the uh, fingerprint reader, that will hold 30 different fingerprints. So that's great. We got multiple people in the house that need to know how to use this or get to this in a certain situation. And even you yourself, um, you know, it's nice to have multiple in case you don't have a great read or, you know, you hit it the wrong way with one finger, you catch it with the, correctly with the other finger, whatever it may be. 30 fingerprints. On the inside of the safe, I'm just gonna lift it up. Hopefully we can see it with this camera angle. There is an administration button, okay? Every time that I say that I'm pressing the button, we read, excuse me, in the instructions about the pressing of the administration button. That's what we're talking about. Let's go over it. For changing the five digit combination on the keypad, I believe we're going to press the administration button and hold it. We will hear one beep, then we'll hear two beeps, at which point we will release the administration button and we will enter our new five digit code. Let's give it a try. Right here. Okay, we heard two beeps, or we had one beep, then two beeps, so we're gonna enter a new code. How about this? We heard a beep at the end, sounded good. We'll close it. That's how most keypads work. They give us a successful, usually single beep or uh, at the end of something, uh, even on the uh, keypads of your gun safe. So quickly, let's see if our one, two, three, four, five buttons work. It took it, it's that simple. Administration button on the inside. We're gonna hold it, we're gonna hear a one beep, then we're gonna hear the two beeps, we're gonna let go. We're gonna enter our new five digit sequence and see if that works, okay? So that's how that works every time. If you have questions, again, in the bottom, let me know or hit me up uh, at any time you like. Let's go over here, the um, fingerprint reader. Now I'm gonna tell you this, and I tell everybody the same way uh, in person or in these videos, not everybody fingerprints well. That's not your fault, it's nobody else's fault, it's just how it is. So, it's really important that you try to keep very consistent on how you put your finger on the reader when we're uh, entering it in to program it. And it's just that important as well when we go to um, enter our fingerprint to open the box, okay? This one's a little bit different. We're using the administration button again, okay? I'm gonna press and release. I'll get the one successful beep. The reader, there will be the blue light that begins to swirl around. So I'll get the blue light, I'm gonna print, print, print. At the last print, if everything went well, we'll see a green light and hear some beeping, okay? Uh, if we did not, we'd get a red light at the end. Like I told you, this has a default now where any print will read as of right now. So, hopefully, we program my uh, fingerprint in. We're gonna do an index finger here. Uh, we program that in and everything works fine. So let's press and release. And we're gonna look for the blue light. We're gonna read once. Go yellow light, I guess you'd call it. And then let's go three. I got a loud, longer beep and a green light. That means success. Now, two things we wanna test. One, did our finger read? Ooh, see that? Red. I don't think I held it on there well, to be honest with you. I know I didn't hold it exactly how I did uh, reading it. It's okay to make a mistake in these videos because you're gonna make a mistake, possibly, and then you're gonna have questions, right? So let me do a better job of placing my finger the way I had it. Okay, and so I got the green light. Now, again, this thing holds 30 prints. It comes default, anything will open it. We have now successfully programmed one fingerprint, which should mean Let's do the ring fingers. You know, there's no way they're the same, right? Does this open it? No, we got the red light. And so again, if I hold it the way I should, green light, okay? So again, very quickly, how did we do that? We reached in here and pressed and released once. Got the blue light blinking, we're gonna go thumb. Good, good. See, that didn't like it. Didn't like it again. Like I said, man, we don't all read well. Mm -hmm. 
So that's a really important tip, okay? Uh, I'm doing that intentionally. I want you to see that either it's the way I hold myself or the way that the reader and my thumb are going together. It doesn't like it. Could be my nasty locksmith hands aren't clean enough. So we will test that theory. Now we'll step the other direction. And I'm gonna try uh, my left hand. I'm gonna go back to my index finger. So press and release. Cool. Let's go one, two, three. I get the long beep and the green light, which should mean that it took that fingerprint. Okay. So again, I could have made one of those cool edited videos where everything works all streamlessly and flawlessly, but let's be honest, I'm in the service industry. I fix things for a living. I answer questions for a living. I'm showing you that not everything can be perfect, whether it's the machine, whether it's you, whether it's the wind, whether it's anything else. So whether it's the, the, the strength of the battery that's inside of this thing. So I wanted to show you that as well. That's how you program or reprogram the keypad at any time you want to. And that's how you program in your fingers. I ask that you please leave questions and comments down below. Um, if you would like to purchase one of these, they are available on our website at a-1locksmith.shop. We will leave a link down in the description and so that you can check that out. And if there's something I should have said or talked about, maybe I didn't uh, because you wanted to learn about it, by all means, leave it in the comments and we will be glad to answer those as well. Guys, I will see you on the next one.